Hello, hello. I'm Chris Ruckus. This is another B Drop TV session. I'm here with the Pool Surfers. They're going to be performing two songs for us today. Why don't you take it away for us, guys? Certain disaster. Oh, no, this mic is still here. Yeah. Oh. 
Knocking down the I won't take no for certain disasters. Now I will be faster. I know what you ask for. Make it up for me to control. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. So I used to run into skaters on my bike. 
Yeah, he's a BMX. <laughs> Take him out in cars, but. Full surfers, baby. I love it. I love it's it. kind of stuck, you know? <laughs> Can't you? You, can't, you can't forget Pool Surfers, right? You can't. So what actually. was that band's name? Pool Surfers. Oh, yeah. We said F is. It's worked so far. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It worked so it. far, man. Don't break it. That's for sure. Yeah, that's for sure. All right, so the two songs you guys played for us today. So we had uh, Alivera. Elvira. Elvira. Yeah. Sorry, Elvira. Elvira. And uh, tell us a little bit about that song. Come on, Chris. Well, it's, uh, I don't know. It's, me and Johnny wrote it, him and I. Yeah. Uh, actually came out to be a pretty good song. And then we wrote another song. We did it acoustically. Yeah, it was all acoustic. So we actually recorded it acoustically. We have an acoustic EP out on Spotify and all the all platforms. So you can find Elvira there or on YouTube. But, uh, roller coaster, right? Roller coaster. Yeah, right. Roller coaster. I, I listened to that one myself. I was, I was yeah. a big fan of that. Yeah. I loved it. It was fun. It was a good time. Yeah, but then we kind of led it into a reggae song called Garden that we wrote to my apartment. Just change it up, but it yeah. went in well. It went in really well. The tempo change. And, and it all came out. Of, up. It all came out of necessity for live performance, though. Like yeah, we definitely. were just trying to like come up with cool transitions for when we played live, so we seemed more professional and like really just put on a good show. And those that two we worked. just decided, yeah. yeah, that was like a really good. It's like Elvira as in and of itself is kind of a shorter song, even though it hits right. really hard, it's got like a good like, it's just got impact, but. Yeah, we never played it live as a band, so it's really like, wow. still, It's about yeah, a toxic yeah. relationship. I was watching Johnny go through all kinds yeah, of things. Yeah, it's a very toxic relationship. It made it easy to write songs. <laughs> that's, that's what it's about, write a song yeah. about your boy. Yeah. 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 Wow, you're going through sucks. Yeah. <laughs> it's, hey, it's all perspective, isn't it? Yeah. Hey, you got to be careful around Chris because <laughs> anything in your life happens, he's going to write about it, he's going to put in a song, expect you to play it, and yeah. be okay with it. That's not true. <laughs> he just does it. And, but it's fire. It's yeah. fire. It hurts a little bit. Deep. 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 <laughs> deep scars. Totally Johnny Hall wrote that song. Yeah. Put but that in the hashtag to the bottom. Now <laughs> take <laughs> All right. And then the second song that you played, Certain Disaster. That's cool. So that was, that was heavy. That was, that was yes, amazing. Like, it's beat. Quite honest, from my perspective, I mean, I was sitting there, I was bouncing with it. I seen you. <laughs> <laughs> you saw me in the back. That's cool. saw me in the I was keeping going. I was fired up. That's the part you guys can't see is the, the back part. He was right there. Yeah. <laughs> Show the back. Show the back. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he said, no. yeah. anyway. All right, so tell us a little bit about that track. It's kind of uh, based out of the same kind of time frame, but uh, I mean, if I were related to anything, it's more about bad decisions. You know, like as far as like drinking, partying, and then paying the consequences. Yeah. <laughs> it's like almost destined to happen, especially if you're hanging you know, out with your buddies. It's like party. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's go! Let's get a drink. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> hey, what are you doing after this? Yeah. Cause I got shit going on tomorrow. Let's go. I love it. Now we we all know uh, how that is. I think in any in some sort of capacity. Yeah, um, already too much. You no, know, it's a great song. I mean, it's, it's just a, a very, very electric song. I, I think it just has so much energy. Great. Have you guys uh, gotten a chance to perform that live? Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. Just, when the, the Wayfair? We were at the Wayfair. Yes, I was uh, uh, the Wayfair. It was the Wayfair. It was the Viper Room. That's <laughs> the Viper Room. Viper Room. We played it live. Yeah, Viper Room was the first time we played it live. It was, yeah. And, and, it, I, and it, the crowd liked it. Got kind of, yeah, brought them out. You know? Amazing. Well, brought me out. So, took yeah, a cake. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Um, so, uh, other than that, man, what do you guys have going on right now, uh, so far as working on music and, and coming out? We have countless, <laughs> countless <laughs> songs that are so many. 75 percent done. <laughs> Some of them are like 99 percent done, but we just don't play them yet because we're not 100 percent. We're like, we work really hard in the, you know, when we're practicing, we just like grind away at making things as best as they can be and. I think it translates when we play shows because we don't really expect a certain reaction from the crowd. It just is natural, and like I feel like we're doing the right thing with the way we practice, but it translates on stage. So we're constantly writing, have like at least thirty other songs. We got, yeah, we got a group. But we just like we, we write, we constantly write, and we just kind of pick from there, we're and whichever ones feel right, we tell their finish them out, finish them up, and then start we're in like a transitional point right now. Yeah. Waiting exactly. for Chris Ruckus to come and. <laughs> Pulls take, take care of it. It's been hard to like 
recorded a song and we yeah, totally like the producer and all that. <laughs> we, just, we just sit on all kind of demos. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. I mean, this band is amazing. So <laughs> we'll uh, we'll see what the comments actually say about that. Let's, hey. let's pump it up a little bit. <laughs> But, uh, but amazing group, amazing. I love, love what you guys have been doing so far. And um, and why don't you tell everybody right now your social so they can kind of stay up to par on what's, what's coming up. You can find us on Instagram, Pool Surfers. Believe it or not, Facebook, it's still Pool Surfers. Just type in Pool Surfers, baby. Yeah, Spotify, iTunes, etc. All yeah. platforms. Yeah, we're out there. We need to do some updates, but we're there. Yeah, <laughs> amazing, amazing. Um, so. With one of the tracks that you guys performed, it was what we call a B-side. B-side is, as we just spoke about before, something that's pretty deep on either an artist catalog they have that fans really resonate with, um, or it's a song that just you uh, are very, very in tune with from another artist that you're either inspired by or grew up with, something that really has a true meaning and holds meaning to it. Um, so let's do a quick little round on, on what is uh, your favorite B-side. Oh, it's fine. Uh, so, no, it's any other, other artist, any yeah. artist that you find inspiration in that you just I mean, find 90s, special. Like, no doubt. And for sure. Muse and yeah. Muse. Uh, Muse is for me. For Muse sure. for sure. All those. Yeah. So, what's your favorite Muse uh, track on the, on the on the B sides? Oh, B sides. Plug, in, plug in maybe. Plug in maybe is like older two thousands, early two thousands, but it's they're just so on point and it's so simple. Three piece band. And they Simplicity and it's just perfect, and it's just perfect. And the singer, the and, the and it's, they don't need any backtracks or anything. They just nail it to the T. Yeah, it's always been really big for me. I'm personally a big fan of me, so I think there's a lot of people that are big fan yeah. of me. Yeah. But, yeah. but to look into those we deeper all songs, work yeah. around with what we all love. Like my big, my big thing is like uh, I just saw Lime Cordell play live uh, just like a month ago, and I was just blown away. My dad's a big Lime Cordell fan, and. Uh, we went together and just, dude, it was the sickest performance I've ever seen. I've just been kind of diving into them pretty hard. Sticky fingers, like writer's envy, you know, I got, Sticky fingers. got a little bit of envy going sublime, on there. They're just office. super good, man. It's sublime. I mean, I'm a long beach guy, so I know yeah, yeah, that's how it We grew up listening to that when we were kids, you know? Yeah. So, what about you, Kevin? It was the same thing as, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was the same thing as, as Johnny. Oh, yeah. It was the same thing as Johnny, you know, he was just one big inspiration for me, for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, just that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. We got some drums here. I know he's gonna have a special one. Yeah. <laughs> he did. Well, I need to hold this for a second. Uh, <laughs> he's got a lot of inspiration. I do actually, but I mean, in terms of what is most applicable to our sound and what I feel like really attributes to my role in this band and how we sound, I would say, as kind of left field as it might be, Steel Pulse. That was, I grew up listening to Steel Pulse simultaneously with Maybe growing up on <laughs> old school hip hop and R&B, but Steel Pulse was actually one of the first bands, the first concert I ever went to. Um, I was 18, I saw Steel Pulse, and that's, I was already a fan, and then seeing them live, that like just changed my life and made me just want to pursue that even harder, and I always knew I wanted to be a musician from like the age of seven, but Steel Pulse, like that really old school, just super legit reggae, and some songs that they have like, one example I can give is Wild Goose Chase. That's probably my favorite song by them. It has some it's like kind of indie vibes to it, and I feel like we're pretty heavy, lean pretty heavy on the indie side, but we also do dive into the reggae part. So like that's we just kind of blend those sounds together. But Steel Pulse is it for me, man. Steel Wild Pulse. Goose Choice. Wild, oh, Wild Goose Chase by Steel Pulse, man. Wild Goose Chase is good. You can have to back it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank uh, you. I agree with Alex. It's a great song. Steel Pulse. All right. Do you know what that? I don't know about that. I'm gonna have to go. Oh, oh no! I don't. Okay. <laughs> I was Good. saying it out loud so that I could have myself go and listen to it later on. Too. Right, right, right. As you should, Steel as you're Pulse. watching. Right, right, right. Steel Pulse. It's a pretty special band. OG. 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 I love it. I love it. Yeah. All right. Well, this has been another B Drop TV exclusive, and we are live from the Zula Den here in Los Angeles. It's been an amazing, amazing performance by this group, and I hope you guys all enjoyed. Check them out on their socials. And we'll see you next time. Thank you, guys.